flawless victory. Hello everyone. Doom Eternal has taken over the channel, but this might be the last guide that I make for it. I've already done three videos covering all sorts of different tips to which I will link to in the video description, so check them out if you haven't already. I use the magic of PC gaming to give myself infinite health and ammunition to be able to record this and experiment with different weapons, so if you see any weird numbers on the screen, now you know why. I have to say, after finishing the game, going through areas with unlimited ammunition for the BFG is quite a pleasing experience. In this video, I'll be going over the best way of dealing with each of the demons in the game, so let's get started. Okay, what you want to do is shoot the demons until they are dead. If you shoot them, they will take damage and eventually they will die. No, I'm just kidding, of course. That would be all there is to it, but the way the game works can result in a very strange and unintuitive relationship between weapons, enemies and damage. And that can actually make the game feel much harder than it really is. There is one basic piece of understanding that you need to get into your head before we get into the details of every enemy. A good way of thinking about it is that the game can be very deceiving with the way that fodder enemies work. Some weapons can rip through fodder enemies in milliseconds and that will get you thinking that they will also deal a lot of damage to every enemy, right? Wrong. The best way to think about this is thinking about resistance style damage reduction. Fodder enemies have no damage reduction, but most enemies do. What that means is that even if one weapon should do a lot of damage, it's not going to do the same amount of damage to every enemy. So you need to switch weapons almost always when you fire at different targets. Say the last weapon you used is the plasma gun, which is a fairly powerful weapon. Well, if a Kako demon spawns, you might be tempted to just shoot at it with the plasma gun because it should take him down fairly easy. That is the number one mistake that you can make. Every time you're shooting at a demon with a suboptimal weapon, you're wasting both time and ammunition, and that makes the game much harder. Now, some of this information is in the game's codex, like how the chain gun is good against the Hell Knight, but it's definitely not enough. It offers some detailed tips on some enemies, but not all of them. Take the entry for Whiplash and Prowler demons. It's true that an ice grenade is a good way to stop these enemies from moving around so much, but what do you do if your grenade is on cooldown? Or if there are several of them, making it impossible to hit them all at once? You need several different ways of dealing with them, and that's what I'll be going over right now. First of all, fodder enemies. Yes, I know that there is really nothing to say here, but as I mentioned on my tips video, the most reliable way to get glory kills is shooting at them with the heavy cannon, so just keep that in mind. The maker drones are the most unique ones, and as the codex says, keep them alive and headshot them when you need resources. Next, we have the Arachnotron, Revenant, and Mancubus, all of which have weapons that can be shot off using something like the heavy cannon's precision bolt or sticky grenades. You can also take them out using other weapons, but it will take much, much longer to do so. Once the weapons are off, you should switch to a heavier weapon like the chain gun or rocket launcher to finish them off. Or you can just use your plasma gun or super shotgun. The heavy cannon deals too little damage in regular firing mode and the micro missiles are just worthless against heavy units. You can get some headshots with the mancubus and revenant to deal additional damage with any weapon that you use and you can shoot the armor off the legs of the Arachnotron, which seems to do a little bit more damage to it, but it's kind of hard to tell if there's much of a difference. I'll try and provide updates to all of this in the comment sections if there is any new information that crops up. You need three rockets to kill both the Arachnotron and the Mancubus, which is quite a lot given how easily they can be dealt with once they lose their weapon, and only one rocket to defeat the Revenant. Once the Revenant loses his weapons, he is pretty weak and you can usually take him out with one well-placed shot from the Super Shotgun as well. Now, let me pause for a second and talk about the Rocket Launcher and the Chain Gun. They should be your go-to weapons to get rid of heavy units at basically any point in the game. 
you'll see almost every unit can be dealt with with just one volley of the lock on rockets which provides three direct hits and most enemies can't withstand the barrage of the chain guns turret mode as it will stagger them and lock them in place so a good rule of thumb is to use these to finish off weakened or annoying enemies you think that the ballista would do a lot of damage and it kinda does but you need to fire multiple shots and the fire rate is so slow that it's just faster to use the rockets or the chain gun like I mentioned in my tips video, the chain gun turret mode provides one of the easiest ways of completing the timed combat challenges in the game. Okay, moving on. The Kako Demon is one of the easiest enemies to kill in the entire game. Like the tutorial mentions, once you encounter the first one, you can lob a grenade or a sticky bomb into its mouth to trigger an instant glory kill. If for some reason you're out of both of them, the Ballista will get rid of them with one Arbalest shot or two standard shots. And remember what I said about the rockets and chain gun. The Pain Elemental is the Kago Demon's beefer and more annoying cousin. They are extremely tough and take two Arbalest shots or around three to four regular shots from the Ballista. You'll also need around five rockets to take him down, more than twice what you need for the regular Kako Demons, which goes to show how beefy these demons really are. At that point, I would suggest you fire two volleys of locked on rockets, though the Arbalest is probably the way to go. Next up, we have some of the most annoying enemies that the game has to offer. The Prowler and Whiplash, as I mentioned earlier, are very hard to hit because they are constantly on the move and the Prowler can teleport around. If they get too close, they will bounce you around with their melee attacks, making them fairly tricky to deal with and pretty exasperating when you have a room full of demons to deal with. The Codex says it's all cool though, just freeze them with your Ice Bomb. But these show up in packs and you can pretty much guarantee that you'll have at least one or two of them still alive after you've thrown your Ice Bomb. So what do you do? Well, the Prowler is actually incredibly weak, so you can just hook him with your super shotgun and blast him once to get rid of him. The Whiplash is another beast though. They are fairly tough and they will deal a lot of damage both at range and up close, so your best alternative to the Ice Bomb is to just lock on your rockets. Two rockets are needed to trigger a glory kill, so you're kind of, you know, wasting the third rocket. But hitting them individually with pretty much any weapon is extremely hard and getting up close to use the super shotgun isn't very effective since you need to land at least two shots if not three and you'll be getting punished while you try and line up your shots. Pinkies and their cloaked brothers, the Spectres, can be fairly tricky. They are incredibly well armored in the front with the only weak spot being the tail. Now the tutorial mentions that you can jump over them when they charge and if you do, one shot from the super shotgun to the back is enough to take them out. But while you're in the middle of a combat encounter, it can be really impossible to pay attention to their charge, so an ice bomb will do the trick. Just drop it and dash around them to hit their tail. However, if you're out of ice bombs, there is still one more weapon at your disposal. The blood punch will destroy them no matter where you hit them. If you have neither your ice grenade or a blood punch charged up, I would loop around until you do or just, you know, take out your trusty old chain gun turret mode. It will at least stop them from getting too close, even though it will take a lot of bullets to pierce that armor. Speaking of blood punches, you pretty much require one to deal with the cyber mancubus. One punch will destroy their armor and at that point they are pretty much just a standard mancubus with non-destroyable arm cannons. Three rockets will take care of them, or you can use your preferred heavy weapon of choice. Next up, we have the Shield Bros, the Carcass and the Doom Hunter. The Carcass, which is incredibly annoying, will place shield walls which can be easily destroyed with your plasma gun, so just blast both them and their walls with the plasma gun until they are done. Other weapons will deal surprisingly little damage and they attack incredibly quickly at both medium to close range, so the plasma gun is by far the best option at your disposal. If you're desperate, one rocket is enough to kill them, 
but surprisingly they won't go down from just one shot of the super shotgun. The Doom Hunter is a tricky one. He has a shield over the top half of his body which can be taken out by using your plasma gun and once the shield is out you should switch to a harder hitting weapon and target his platform. Good choices for this are of course your trusty chain gun and the super shotgun or even the combat shotgun with the firing mode that makes it full auto. However, using that mode will make you basically stand still so it's not the best option and it's pretty hard to hit him with rockets and the lock-on won't target his platform but rather his body so again not the best choice. Make sure to make getting his sled destroyed a priority because his shields will regenerate if you're not quick enough. You can also take the sled off without punching through his energy shield but his attacks are way stronger and more frequent when his shield is up. He will be super aggressive and try to get as close as he can. Once the shield is down however he'll back off so use your meat hook and even your ice grenade to make sure you nail him down as he can sip around and avoid your shots fairly easily. The blood punch is also pretty effective at weakening the platform. Now we get to some surprisingly basic ones. The strategy for both the Dread Knight and the Hell Knight is the same. Use the chain gun's turret mode. Actually, the fastest way of killing the Hell Knight is to hit him with a barrage of lock-on rockets, which will kill him instantly, but the Dread Knight is a bit more resilient. One barrage will usually trigger his glory kill. The plasma gun is also a decent weapon to use, but you will have to keep on the move to try and stay away from them to avoid taking damage. The full auto mod for the combat shotgun is also a surprisingly good way for taking these guys out. Now there's only the super heavy units left. The Baron of Hell is like a souped up version of the Knights and he is almost equally as vulnerable to the turret mode as they are. However, one blood punch will instantly take out his armor and expose his fiery body. Once this is done, the turret will take care of the rest. Now, the Archvile is one of the nastiest demons in the game. He summons and buffs other demons and has hard hitting attacks and is extremely tough to kill. And he can also teleport away from you. A blood punch will destroy his shield if he's using it and any demons that he's summoning while he's using it. But both with him and our next demon, we get into the category of just use whatever you have that hits the hardest. So if you have your Crucible of Doom, which is the one hit sword that you get, just use that or even your Unmaker if you have it unlocked to get rid of him as fast as possible. The turret as always works wonders even on this demon but given how much of a threat he is, I would only resort to the turret if I have absolutely no alternative and if there are very few other demons lurking around. The Tyrant is not nearly as terrifying as his size would suggest, but given the amount of damage that he can take, the one hit options like the BFG and the Crucible are always recommended. The Rockets and the Turret Mode will also have him staggering and they will deal a decent amount of damage and also allow you to keep your distance while you take him down. And finally we get to the Granddaddy, the Marauder the only enemy that requires you to change your playstyle just for him. Now the game says to keep him at medium distance but that can be very tricky since he dashes all over the place and can get very close to you very fast. And if you dash too far away he will use his axe beam thing or summon a spectral dog to attack you. It seems a bit counterintuitive but the best way to deal with him that I found so far is to run away from him. This will cause him to shoot his beam but you will be far away enough to dodge it and if he summons his dog you will also be able to kill it before it gets too close. Once you stop for a few seconds the Marauder will run towards you as fast as he can and then launch into his axe attack which can be interrupted. Use your super shotgun to do so and after you've interrupted him you can get a second shot from either the shotgun or you can quickly switch to the ballista and shoot him. I recommend you do that because that way you won't be using up all your shotgun ammunition before you're done with him. Before the fight starts, 
Just try and get the most amount of ammo out of any fodder enemies and try taking out the ones with flamethrowers because they can be very annoying and make the fight much harder. Okay, that will be all. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like or leave your comment if there are any additional tips that you want to recommend. And please check out the other videos on Doom Eternal, I will leave the link to them in the video description and down in the comments. And if you enjoy them, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.